Last year, I went to Beale for my friend Ella's birthday party and we ended up on this little rental boat and I had the best time jumping into the water, listening to music with my friends and I finally comprehended why all these rich white people had yachts. And it got me thinking. What if I learned how to sail? So I logged into Instagram, made a post asking if anyone knew anything about how to get into sailing, and lo and behold, this girl, my age, from New Zealand, invites me to go sailing with her and her partner. Fast forward 10 months of many emails and video calls later, I land in Alicante, Spain to spend the next two months with two people I had never met before. I had no idea what to expect. I've never even been on a sailboat. No idea what the boat would look like or where I'd be sleeping. I was just excited to be there and find out. Let's go guys. For the first couple of days, I stayed in an Airbnb room to recover from jet lag and slowly get to know Alethea and her partner, Tim. After moving onto the boat, we spent those first weeks running around the city, doing our groceries, and scouting out the best vegan yummies, which was the perfect time to practice the Spanish we'd all been learning from Lingoda. Those were the words. How does it Excellent. Within days, I got to see Alethea's warm and energetic eagerness, as well as Tim's gentle thoughtfulness with cheeky remarks sprinkled throughout. Yeah. Well done. Wherever you're feeling really secure, so you don't want to slide I feel good here. Okay. I got hoisted up with Olivia's insane muscles so I could enjoy the best view in the marina. You are officially a rigger. Hello! We were sick of her, so we had to put her up there. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't do it in your pants. My head kind of hurts. <laughs> this was also my first time experiencing Spanish culture more closely and I've always been a little intimidated by it just because it felt so different from my Chinese Canadian upbringing but I quickly adapted to their rhythm of life and met lots of sweet people along the way. We watched the entire city of Alicante stop to prepare for their biggest celebration of the year, Jogueres, where giant sculptures are put up all around the city and burned down to celebrate the arrival of summer and let go of all the troubles from the past year. By the end of the two weeks, I had settled into life on board and with matching sandals and full bellies, we began preparing our voyage to the Balearic Islands. Excited. You're officially on board. Nautical nonsense is something you wish. SpongeBob SquarePants. Today is my first day going out overnight passage for 24 hours. We'll arrive tomorrow morning. You can see the wind direction. So we'll start off with the wind behind us. Now we're getting to the end of the day and the wind drops off. Tim showed me how to use all the cool navigation tools, both digital and analog. We keep a log book. We've got a chart plotter here. After briefing the route, going through safety precautions, stowing away all the goods so they don't crash down through passage, closing latches, filling up water tanks, we set off on our 30-day sailing adventure to the Balearic Islands and all the way up to Spain and France. I was very excited to start learning the ropes. Time to put the sails up. All I want you to do is, as the slack comes in this line, just keep pulling it through. I'm back and help you with the last bit, okay? okay? So don't panic. I'm not panicking. Everybody stay calm. I have stay this calm. under control. This is my first time sailing. I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to undo the brake. Puffy's going to turn away from the wind, which means the sail's going to fill. And we won't let the sail go out a little bit. Ease it up. Okay, now we're going to put the head sail out. Ready? Here it goes. Oh. Oh, you're good. Oh. Up. Once we hoisted up our sails, tidied the cockpit, it was time to lie back and relax. But sailing is just like life. No matter how prepared you are, things can always turn in a matter of minutes. Doing okay? I'm using 
using all of my energy to not be seasick right now. Okay. Should I just miss my watch buddy? It's feeling a little sick. After a treacherous night of puking curry into a salad bowl, we've arrived in Ibiza! She's a trooper. Yeah, go and have a look. Oh my- Oh my god! I'm gonna throw up again. Oh my gosh! Holy... Holy cow! What do you think? I would throw up so many more times for this. Wow. We spent the morning sleeping off a headache, but we made a delicious sweet cabbage rice stir fry for lunch. It's featured in the last recipe video if you want to make it, it's so good. And then we pretty much just spent the afternoon jumping into the water, swimming around. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> no. mm. Oh, it's gorgeous. I got very brave and tried doing some backflips, which had like a 20% success rate. There's something about being in water that always makes me feel like a kid again. I think the seawater has cured my seasickness. We did have to fend off some waves from nearby speedboats and especially the ferries. Oh boy. Big one. But they could not stop us from having a delicious dinner. Oh my gosh, there's cheese on broccoli. Vegan cheese. It makes a biscuit. Thank you. Mm, I love corn. That's it. As the night fell, it just felt magical being on our own, floating home, looking out onto the coast. I've never seen things from this perspective before. Watching people dining and doing their thing from this distant floating home. Stowing everything away for passage tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Good thing I don't have to wake up though because <laughs> I don't know anything yet. It's the benefits of being stupid. I woke up early the next morning from the sound of the motor and rocking of the boat. Although I took some seasickness pills the day before, I still wasn't feeling too great. But I did make it up eventually, did my business, and climbed up into the cockpit. They are here at the moment. Today, things were making a bit more sense. I felt like I was starting to get the hang of things a little bit more. The wind is coming from this direction. See how, if you look at the bottom, see how it wrinkles? You watch how it gets stretched out now. Wow, I was pretty thrown aback by how gorgeous it was. I didn't know anything about Palma. The arrival felt so majestic. You saw this huge racing sailboat. You can see the name of all the other boats when you press onto them. As we entered the giant marina, the boats had flags from countries all over Europe. Hola! We've arrived in Palma! And I like this harbor actually a lot more already. It's so international and lively. Just sitting by the pier. Finding time to be alone and recharge definitely proved to be a bit difficult. I know it's only my second day sailing, but it's very not what I expected, to be honest. It takes a lot more energy than I expected, especially when you're living with different people. There's like different energy, different moods. And I feel like I'm someone that really absorbs other people's energies in a way that it's easy to take on as my own. So I decided to go on a little solo exploration before our dinner reservation. And it ended up being 
exactly what I needed. Being docked to the marina just meant that I could hop off the boat and walk around the city whenever I needed time alone. It was a good exercise for me actually to pay attention to when I actually needed time alone because I'm someone that needs a lot of it but I don't realize it because I also love socializing at the same time. Palma itself blew me away. It was absolutely stunning. It felt lively and majestic with pockets of calm and inspiration. There's also so much delicious vegan food that I felt so welcome. It's definitely a city I would love to come back to or even sublet and stay for a couple months. What if I just move here? a four-hour sail we are arriving at our anchorage spot there's a lot of germans in mallorca actually lots of restaurants with spanish english and german on the menus so we're not anchoring we're gonna attach to one of these boys puffy has got the boat hook and the line ready they're attaching theirs right now just went in for a dive dried off and Realize I got stung by a jellyfish. The swelling has subsided a lot after putting on that cream. It's so freaking beautiful. Despite being surrounded by nature and so appreciative of this beautiful experience, I couldn't help but feel bits of loneliness sprinkled throughout, especially in the evenings. I had a really hard time coming to terms with these feelings, so I tried to ignore them and just focus on the things that I loved. Sitting on the ledge of the boat and watching all the fish underneath is probably my favorite thing to do. In retrospect, I realized that feeling melancholic doesn't mean you're ungrateful. These emotions can coexist together and they don't invalidate each other. I steered our way around the cliffside this morning and my steering has gotten much better so I feel pretty proud about that and since the rest of the course is just like super straight it's just on autopilot right now and we're gonna have some delicious breakfast the water is super duper calm this is like the calmest I've ever seen yeah. look at that there's like zero swell I'm doing my non-internet liquefied biscuit that's good stuff mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. It's quite amazing just sailing along these cliff sides this whole time. And then slowly a little town materializes. Look at it, it's so cute. I feel like the most magical part of sailing is arriving. It's really exciting to explore a new town. Apparently there's a old wooden train that you can take around this town, so. I hope we get to take out the dinghy and then motor into the town because so far we haven't done that yet and I'm very excited to experience that. I feel like I'm in the Studio Ghibli movie pulling up into these beautiful coastal towns. This one seems a bit more fancier. It's a lot bigger, a lot more developed. 
imagine living up there. The water seems pretty sandy, so I think anchoring should be pretty easy. Ready! To get from here to there, you need to inflate the dinghy. Having been living nomadically for the past two years, every new place I went to felt like a potential new home. So here was a touristic but charming town. The port was filled with Spanish, French, German, and English families sunbathing and dining along the seaside promenade. I practiced getting better at communicating when I needed time alone without feeling guilty and wandered the streets relishing in my own company, occasionally making a new friend. At this point, we both had a lot of work and personal affairs to sort out, so we decided to anchor here for a few more days and took a day off to hop on the old wooden train that took us to the town center. I was really surprised to be greeted by such a bustling square. It had a beautiful church and lots of little shops tucked away in the windy streets. Alethea found a really amazing natural food store with a restaurant in the back that felt so calming. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's really good sauce. Oh my god. We loved it so much that we actually came back here another day just to go over some sailing theory. So the coziness of the town enveloped by the surrounding mountains made me fall in love yet again with another place. Uh, uh, uh. This place is bloody gorgeous. I fantasize what life would be like if I lived here. That is so precious. Okay. I felt really sad about leaving here, but on the last night, a thunderstorm woke me up and it felt like a signal telling me it was time to move on. Waves are about a meter high today, and we've just left Soyer towards Port de Blenis, and this is going to be a 24-hour passage. Oh my god! Although it was a little bit choppy, it was excellent sailing conditions to adjust our sails and scoop up as much of the wind as possible to propel us forward. We were able to turn off the motors completely and just go wind power. We're actually really ahead of time on our way to Puerto Blanes, which is great. It's so beautiful. Oh me, oh now, me, oh me, oh me, oh me, me, quick now, quick now, me. It's currently 9.24 and our first night watch shift has begun. We're doing 9 to 12. I need to put on my life vest. So basically night watch is where you scan for boats on the horizon because a lot of times on the chart there's also boats that don't show up. Secret boats. Yeah, and some of them are swapping routes. There are two unmarked boats and then in the middle we saw one of them had dropped off like a little boy and then the other boat comes and picks it up. This overnight passage went much smoother than the last. We had the full moon illuminating us the entire way as Alethea and I talked about what we wanted to release. Off camera, the past week had been filled with tumultuous emotions and navigating them was not easy. 
Although we found our way out of one storm with patience and understanding, another one was yet to come. Early the next morning, Tim woke me up to catch a glimpse of wild dolphins jumping across the dawn horizon. I could see land coming closer in the distance, so I knew it was safe to get some food in my belly without risking any of it coming back up. Once we made it to the mainland, we loaded up on our food supply and sailed north towards France to visit a very special person. Sailing from one anchorage to the next, I felt my energy getting more and more depleted each day. I didn't really feel like filming and my body just felt really sleep deprived and weak. I'm gonna have to practice that one a few more times after I hit the gym. journal first. Just do the little little thing that make me supposed to feel better even if I don't believe it in the moment. I tried every technique I could think of to get out of this heaviness like jumping into the cold water, lying in the sun, or just verbally speaking my thoughts out loud. All of these difficult emotions I had been holding onto the past days, weeks, and months started to surface as I spoke, some of which I hadn't even realized was affecting me so deeply. It stopped raining, that was a much needed nap. I let Alethea and Tim know I was feeling really off that day and they were so kind and made me feel really safe feeling those difficult feelings around them. As someone who's never really felt I should socialize when I'm feeling sad, this meant a lot to me. Little by little, I felt myself perking up again, and by the end of the day, a lot of the heaviness had left my body, though some lingering loneliness still accompanied me to sleep. The next day, my period arrived, which almost made yesterday's sadness make sense, but I really wanted to know why, so I spent the whole morning reading about the menstrual cycle and how our hormone levels actually change throughout it. I realized I should not have been putting so much stress on myself to work all the time and getting frustrated when my energy levels wouldn't stay the same. My body just was not designed that way. I had been pushing it too hard throughout the past months and living without a routine only made things worse. Good morning. I think we just crossed over to France. Bonjour. Bonjour. Nous sommes en France. France. We sailed across to France, where my aunt came to pick us up to spend a couple days in Ariège. Lisa is officially on the boat. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if I have money, I'll buy a boat. <laughs> Literally 10 minutes ago, she was like, Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I can look at the boat. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the place we stayed in the countryside was so beautiful and quiet. And most of all, I can't even put into words how good it felt to sleep on a real mattress again. After a couple days, we went back to my aunt's town, which was really cool to share with Alethea, but I had a really difficult decision that I needed to make. Ended the sailing journey earlier than expected. I was still supposed to probably be sailing for the next week and a half, but my body's just been so, so tired. I think I came in to it already feeling depleted, burnt out, not gonna lie. And it was a really hard decision to make. I was afraid of disappointing Alethea and Tim, and I was afraid of disappointing myself. As much as I wanted to continue sailing and exploring the French Riviera, my body was just so depleted, and my mind felt anxious and lost. It was the biggest wake-up call to start putting my health first, so instead of sailing for another week and a half, I stayed at my aunt's to rest and finish my first sailing video. I always say that everything happens for a reason, and this time I got to bond so much more with my cousin. I ended up taking her to Barcelona with me before I departed for her 16th birthday. I love Barcelona! <laughs> This felt like the most adult grown-up thing I've ever done. Last time we were here, she was five and I was 15. It felt surreal to see how much we've both grown. It made me feel so grateful. I loved having a mini travel companion with me, exploring the city together. We visited all the yummy food spots you guys recommended. It was amazing. This is a review about this restaurant. Flat and cold. Kale. Kale. <laughs> okay. 
It was so good. So freaking good. <sighs> we also spent a day hiking up the mountain to see the beautiful views of Barcelona and visit Juan Miro Foundation. No one else in my family likes abstract art, so it was really special that she really loved it and we got to make up stories or interact with all the pieces. Last time I saw her, I feel like she was still a child, but this time just really being able to see what a mature, responsible, kind, hilarious human being that she's becoming just felt so beautiful. Like, is this what it's like to be a parent? I also got to relive things that I liked when I was 16. I completely forgot how much I liked malls, shopping, and Victoria's Secret. Happy birthday! Your first Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Thank you, Jiki. You're welcome. It was really fun to introduce her to my friends, Sarah, who's one of the first viewers I'd ever met over five years ago, and then later Tim and Alethea, who ended up sailing back to Barcelona. It was just absolutely magical, and looking back, there's nothing I would have ever changed about this sailing trip. Gonna miss them so much! She already loves them, so. Yeah! <laughs> Overall, this trip went nothing like how I expected it to, but also exceeded my expectations in the ways that I learned about myself and other people. I cannot thank Tim and Alethea enough for allowing me to have this beautiful experience, for sharing your lives with me. That trip completely shifted where I am now in life and what I'm deciding to pursue, so stay tuned for the next videos. I cannot wait to see you guys again soon. I love you. Mwah.